The 2014 Heisman Ceremony featured a number of college football legends. It's been 10 years, and a number of those guys are still playing in the NFL, and they've had some pretty solid careers. Some players, however, well, things didn't pan out too well. Today, we're going to be taking a look back at the players that finished inside the top 10 of Heisman voting all the way back in 2014. Before we get to today's list, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, it probably means you love college football, and it probably means you aren't subscribed to my channel. So make sure to subscribe to one of the best college football communities here on YouTube. Also, if there are any other college football videos you'd like to see on my channel, drop a comment down below and it could be featured as my next video. We'll kick things off today at number 10 in Heisman voting with Baylor quarterback Bryce Petty. Despite seeing his numbers take a hit across the board for the Bears, he was still great during his senior campaign. He threw for just under 3,900 yards with 29 passing touchdowns and 7 interceptions. He led the Big 12 in yards per play, passing yards per attempt, and had the highest passing efficiency rating in the conference. He led Baylor to an 11-2 season in 2014. After his fantastic season, the Jets took Bryce Petty in the fourth round of the 2015 NFL Draft. He ended up making 7 starts and appeared in 10 games from 2016 through 2017. Petty completed 53% of his passes while throwing for 1,300 yards. He had 4 passing touchdowns, but 10 interceptions. His NFL career lasted only a couple of years. Now, it looks like he's the Director of Capital Markets for AMR Capital, where he's responsible for developing, growing, and sustaining a network of partners by building relationships with financial and industry contacts. And if you don't understand what exactly that means, hey, it's all good. Finishing ninth in Heisman voting was Arizona linebacker Scooby Wright. If you remember, he was arguably the most feared defensive player in all of college football that season. He won the Nagurski Trophy, the Lombardi Award, and the Benrick Award, all given annually to the nation's top defender. He ranked inside the top five among FBS players in total tackles, tackles for loss, sacks, and forced fumbles. Overall, he led the country in total tackles with 163, tackles for loss with 29, and forced fumbles with 6. He was only 3rd with his 14 sacks. For those of you who have been around my channel for quite a while, you would know that I've done probably a thousand highlight tapes over the last decade, and Scooby Wright was by far one of the favorites I've ever done. So if you haven't done so yet, go check out that highlight video because his tape from that season was insane. After his prolific collegiate career, Scooby Wright was drafted by the Browns in the 7th round of the 2016 NFL Draft. He spent two years in the NFL, appearing in a total of 13 games and racking up seven total tackles. Since the NFL, he spent time in the Alliance of American Football League, the XFL, and the USFL. And now, he's currently on the Birmingham Stallions roster of the UFL. Finishing in 8th place is a quarterback I'm sure you're all familiar with, Dak Prescott. He put together the best season by a quarterback in Mississippi State history. His finish in the Heisman vote was higher than any player in Bulldog history as well. He shattered 12 school single season records while leading the program to its highest pole finish since 1940 and their first Orange Bowl in 73 years. Dak Prescott broke school records for rushing yards by a quarterback back with 1,000, total yards of offense with 4,400, total offense per game with 341 yards, touchdowns responsible for with 41, passing yards with 3,500, and passing yards per game with 265. Overall, he finished 5th nationally in points responsible for with 252. Zach Prescott was selected by the Cowboys in the 4th round of the 2016 NFL Draft. Since being drafted, he's been one of the top quarterbacks in all of the NFL. So far in his career, he's thrown for just under 30,000 yards with over 200 passing touchdowns. Currently, he's 57th all-time in passing yards, 49th all-time in passing completions, and 49th all-time in passing touchdowns. The way his career is currently trending, he's probably going to finish inside the top 20 in all three of those categories whenever he retires. The only thing he's really missing is, well, leading the Cowboys to a Super Bowl. Finishing 7th in Heisman voting was Indiana running back Tevin Coleman. He became the 18th player in FBS history to rush for 2,000 yards in a single season. He did it in dominating fashion, becoming the fourth fastest rusher to ever reach 2,000 yards. 
Coleman's 7.5 yards per carry was the fifth highest among the 18 2,000 yard rushers. Overall, Coleman finished the season second in rushing yards, rushing yards per game, and all purpose yards per game. His best game of the season came against Rutgers, where he ran for over 300 yards. Coleman was selected by the Falcons in the third round of the 2015 NFL Draft. Overall, Coleman went on to have a pretty successful NFL career. He spent time with three teams, the Falcons, 49ers, and Jets. During his eight-year career, Coleman ran for 3,300 yards with 25 rushing touchdowns. He also added 131 receptions for 1,300 receiving yards and 13 receiving touchdowns. His best season came in 2018 when he had nearly 1,100 yards of total offense and 9 total touchdowns. We last saw him play for the 49ers in 2022 where he appeared in only 5 games. And it looks like that's going to be it for Tevin Coleman's NFL career. Jameis Winston finished 6th in the 2014 voting a year after winning the Heisman in 2013. Although his numbers took a hit from the year prior, he was still one of the top quarterbacks in all of college football. He led the Seminoles to his second consecutive undefeated regular season and a berth in the first ever college football playoff. Winston led the ACC in passing yards with just under 4,000. His 305 completions set the Florida State single season record, while his passing yards were third in program history. Overall, he finished sixth in the country in passing yards. He had 2,000 passing yards in the second half of games, which led all of the country. Winston was the number one overall pick in the 2015 NFL Draft by the Buccaneers. He ended up spending five seasons in Tampa Bay, where he lit up the stat sheet, both good and bad. Overall, he threw for 20,000 yards while in Tampa Bay, including a season in which he led the league with 5,100 yards. He threw 33 passing touchdowns that season, but also had 30 interceptions as well. He spent the next four seasons with the Saints as their backup quarterback. Now, he's the backup quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. Although he's been a backup for the last five seasons, Jameis Winston ranks 102nd all-time in passing yards, 100th in completions, and 101st in passing touchdowns. Coming in at number five was Ohio State quarterback JT Barrett. He had quite the debut season for the Buckeyes. As a freshman, he threw for 2,800 yards with 34 passing touchdowns. He was also insane on the ground, rushing for nearly 1,000 yards with 11 rushing scores. Had he not gone down in the final game of the season to Michigan, he likely would have finished even higher in Heisman voting. He missed out on finishing that game and playing in the Big Ten title game, so that definitely would have increased his odds. Still, it was a fantastic debut season for him. He led the Big Ten in completion percentage, passing yards per attempt, passing touchdowns, and passing efficiency rating. Barrett went on to start for the Buckeyes for three more seasons. He went undrafted in the 2018 NFL Draft, but signed with the Saints as an undrafted free agent. Overall, he spent time with the Saints, Seahawks, and Steelers, but he was never able to make it above the practice squad. In 2022, Barrett signed with the Edmonton Elks of the Canadian Football League. Sadly, he suffered an injury in late March of 2022, and after further medical evaluation, it was determined he would miss the entire 2022 season. Then, in May of that year, the Elks announced they had moved Barrett to the retired list. In July of 2022, Barrett was hired by the Detroit Lions as an offensive assistant. Then, in February of 2023, Barrett was promoted to the role of assistant quarterback's coach. Fourth place was a record-setting quarterback for TCU, Trayvon Boykin. He set TCU single-season records in passing yards with 3,900, touchdown passes with 33, touchdowns responsible for with 42, and total offense with 4,600 yards. He was fourth in the country in total yards and fifth in total touchdowns. Boykin led TCU to a 12-1 finish and a victory in the Peach Bowl, and you can make the case that TCU should have been a playoff team that year. He was an undrafted free agent in 2016, but was picked up by the Seahawks and actually won their backup quarterback job. He appeared in a total of five games in 2016 and even threw a touchdown pass. He stayed with the Seahawks through 2018 before he was ultimately released following domestic assault allegations. Boykin ended up being sentenced to three years in prison. Then, in January of 2023, following his release from prison, he signed with the Galgos de Tijuana of the Mexican Liga de Football Professional League. In November of 2023, he signed with the Massachusetts Pirates of the Indoor Football League, but decided to return to the Galgos de Tijuana. Finishing third is the only wide receiver inside the top 10, Alabama wide receiver Amari Cooper. He was the best wide receiver in all of college football that year. 
he finished his campaign with 124 receptions leading the FBS. His 1,700 receiving yards led the SEC and were the second most in the nation. Cooper also caught 16 touchdown passes leading the conference and good for the second most in all of college football. It was one of the best seasons we've seen from a wide receiver over the last decade. Cooper was selected by the Raiders with the fourth overall pick in the 2015 NFL Draft. He's then spent time with the Raiders, Cowboys, and Browns during his 10-year NFL career. While he's never been a top three wide receiver in the NFL, he's still carved out a very solid and respectable NFL career. Since debuting in the NFL, Amari Cooper has 667 receptions for 9,500 yards and 60 receiving touchdowns. Currently, he's 64th all-time in receiving yards, 70th all-time in receptions, and 93rd all-time in receiving touchdowns. Earlier in this video, we talked about Tevin Coleman, who had an insane season in 2014, but he was number two in a lot of stats, and that's because he trailed Wisconsin running back Melvin Gordon. Gordon finished his season rushing for 2,600 yards, a Big Ten record, and the second most in FBS history, barely missing out on what Barry Sanders did in 1988. Overall, Gordon led college football, averaging 185 yards per game, the ninth best in FBS history. He also became the fastest player in FBS history to reach 2,000 yards. To make that even more impressive, Gordon also led the NCAA with 32 touchdowns, the second best in Big Ten history. He averaged 7.5 yards per rushing attempt, the best mark ever among any player with at least 210 carries. It was an insane season for Melvin Gordon and one of the best we've ever seen from a college football running back. Gordon was selected 15th overall by the Chargers in the 2015 NFL Draft. His best season came in 2017 when he ran for over 1,100 yards with 8 rushing scores. After spending 5 seasons with the Chargers, Gordon spent 3 years in Denver and then appeared in 4 games with the Ravens this past season. Overall, Melvin Gordon has rushed for over 6,500 yards and has 56 rushing touchdowns. He's also caught 312 passes with 2,500 receiving yards and 14 receiving touchdowns. Melvin Gordon is one of only 13 players in NFL history to have those numbers. Finishing number one in Heisman Trophy voting all the way back in 2014 was Oregon quarterback Marcus Mariota. He finished third in the FBS with 4,500 passing yards, but led the country in passing yards per attempt. His 42 passing touchdowns led the Pac-12 and were the second most in the country as well. Mariota was also an absolute threat on the ground as he ran for nearly 800 yards with 15 rushing scores. When accounting for all of his numbers, Marcus Mariota led the FBS in total yards and total touchdowns responsible for. He also led Oregon to the national title game, but they fell to Ohio State. Mariota was drafted by the Titans with the second overall pick in the 2015 NFL Draft. His career got off to a pretty strong start as he threw for 6,300 yards with 45 passing touchdowns in his first two seasons. Then in 2017, he threw for 3,200 yards, but his numbers began to slowly decline every year from that point on. Mariota ended up losing his starting job with the Titans after a five-year stint in Tennessee. He then spent two seasons in Vegas with the Raiders where he appeared in 11 games, though he made zero starts. He signed with the Falcons in 2022 and made 13 starts for them. Although he played majority of the season, his numbers weren't all that great. He threw for only 2,200 yards with 15 passing touchdowns and 9 interceptions. In 2023, he was the backup quarterback to the Eagles, appearing in only 3 games and attempting only 23 passes. This offseason, he signed with the Commanders, where he's going to be a backup quarterback to whichever rookie they draft later this month. Well, that wraps it up for today's video. Which player inside the top 10 shocked you the most with how their NFL career panned out? whether good or bad. Whoever it is, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if there's a video you'd like to see in the future, drop a comment below and it could be featured as my next video. Before you leave, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. I'm posting college football videos all off season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, don't forget to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.